Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. No more red circles. So if you're Android, we suggest you switch to Spotify. Also, the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, turn the notifications on. If you're Apple, Apple Podcast still works just fine. Also, check out Off the Floor. That's our new Discord server, $2.99 per month. That's where you can communicate with other Heat fans and with us all day long on a series of different channels. Once you're in, you have access to everything. $2.99 per month. Get off of Twitter, X, and all of that silliness and just chat with other Heat fans. Link is right here in the description on the podcast feed, the YouTube channel, and pinned to the top of the Five Reasons Twitter page. Now we want to introduce a great new sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network. You can find them at BigBrotherIronwork.com. That's BigBrotherIronwork.com. As with so many of our sponsors, avid miami heat fans this is licensed and insured they offer free estimates across florida including dade county broward the keys and the like competitive pricing and they guarantee steadfast fabrication and installation they specialize in all the metal work such as aluminum fences gates pergolas railings and more and they've got more than 20 years of experience so they are established experts so reach out to abraham in english 786-406-5780. That's Abraham at 786-406-5780. Or Daniel at 305-218-8681. Big Iron, excuse me, Big Brother Ironwork. I'll get it right. Big Brother Ironwork.com. And now, today's episode. Down to this gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs, where well, here's the thing, you can check the score, hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs, just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all, kept the floor playing, got an all band, y'all seen the block, stop with one hand, and pack with trust, it's power, have the guts, we here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick and at Five Reasons Sports. I got Alex Toledo. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket. Make sure you check out the episode that we did after the Heat's loss in Indiana. We also had Greg and Brady on there with us. That's on the YouTube channel and on the podcast feeds. The Miami Heat are traveling to Atlanta today. I believe they actually spent the night in Indiana after the loss. That was the plan. They've got a back-to-back. It's a road home back-to-back in Atlanta, and then Dallas at home. Luka comes in. Dallas is still fighting for stuff. We'll talk about that. And then two games with Toronto, 8 o'clock on Friday, 1 o'clock on Sunday to finish the regular season. The Heat, as they stand, are in the eighth spot. They did not get any help, not that they deserved any last night. San Antonio Spurs had a double-digit lead against the Sixers, who were missing Embiid. They could not hold it. The Sixers behind Maxi's, what was it, 54, uh, won in double overtime. So all of this stuff is crashing down on Heat fans today, Alex, where we're hearing a lot of, well, not a lot, but there's a sort of a silly minority on this. I wish that they hadn't won their play-in game last year. They hadn't had that run, so they would have convinced the front office to do something as if the front office was just going to snap their fingers and Joe Cronin uh, was going to send them Dane. Um, so there's a lot of silliness out there. I understand the frustration and kind of where it comes from. There is no one who can make a reasonable argument that they shouldn't have had the finals run last year. I'm sorry, okay? You watched it. You listened to us. You enjoyed it. Get over it, all right? They are where they are right now. <laughs> For a variety of different reasons. I feel like I'm speaking to five people, but to the five loudest people on Twitter. That's why you should join off the floor. I don't think any of them are on there, although I've comped a couple of them if they actually would like to appear. But anyway, Alex, getting back to it. Can we dismiss that before we get on to where the Heat are? Like, sh- Should the Heat have lost to Chicago in the second play-in game last year? Should Max not have made those shots? Should we have had two months of... Nothing to talk about on five on the floor. Was that better than beating Milwaukee and beating New York and beating Boston and actually winning a game in the finals against Denver, even though it wasn't enough? Should they have just tanked it? Should they have just tanked it? Alex, looking back, did they F up by winning that game? No, absolutely not. They didn't. They didn't mess up. Like, I, I know I get where the frustration is coming from, because when you when you rewind to a year ago, they were almost out of the plane entirely. They lost the first game to Atlanta. 
where Clint Capella turned into prime Will Chamberlain for a night on the boards. And I I, I believe, I got to go and, and check back, but I believe he finished with about 55 rebounds. I got to go and, and check to make sure that's all right. But then the game after that, you almost lose to the Bulls. You know, Max Drews goes crazy. You end up winning in the fourth quarter, and that magical run happened. So, no, they – I'm, I'm glad they didn't take that game. But I get where the frustration is coming from for sure because it's like, okay, one year later and you're right back in the same position. Like we were talking about the same things last year. I remember we were doing shows about, oh, you know, if you win this game and this game, you can finish out as the sixth seed and you can be out of the play in and boom, right back here again. They had the chance to control their destiny. Everybody back, right? And I understand everybody just got back, right? It's not like they've been rolling. It's not perfect circumstances. Three games and four nights, all that. You had the chance to win, and you go into that game, and you just get absolutely destroyed in the first quarter. And now, like, you're in this position once again. So, no, they shouldn't have lost that game, but the, the frustration to me is, is uh, you know, is very valid. Yeah, the frustration is valid because, like you said, even after all of the other frustrations that this team has given us and the fans this year, it was right there. And you're playing against a team that is not an elite team, and you got torn up by TJ McConnell. And I, so I get it. I, I, I get that part of it. But what I want to say first, again, before we go on the schedule, was that has nothing to do <laughs> with whether the Heat are going to make a move or not make a move going forward. And by the way, they did make a move. Okay. They went out and got Terry Rozier, who has given them a lot of what they wanted him to give them particularly the rim pressure, and we know about the streaky shooting and all that kind of stuff. And he wasn't right last night. And again, that's not an excuse. They had enough, okay? They had enough even though Duncan is not right right now. Talked all year about at least having their players on the floor. They were on the floor, even if two of them were not at full strength. So I'm not excusing the players for that performance. I'm not excusing Eric Spolster for apparently not having the team ready, okay? to play at the level that they need to play. And he knows what it takes in that building. He's played in much bigger games or coached in much bigger games than that in that building in the past. They did not bring the requisite focus, energy, attention, effort, any of that. That's on them, okay? It's on all of them. And, yes, it is on the front office to a certain degree because you're putting a team on the floor that you think can accomplish those things. They did not, okay? But, like Barry tweeted after I tweeted today about how these things are not correlated. Okay. Last year, not, you know, winning in the play in and having that run and all the rest of that and kind of where they are now. They don't need, okay, to lose that game yesterday to know that changes are likely necessary in the postseason. I'm hedging as much as I can because you can't make a deal by yourself. Okay. Unless it's a free agent when you have cap space. And even then, you need the player to agree. You can't make a trade by yourself. So I can't guarantee anything. But I can tell you, they know, okay, when they need to add something to a team and they try to go out and get it. And this year, again, they did in Terry Rozier. It may not have been the one that everybody wanted, but that was the willing trade partner they were able to find at a price that was reasonable to them. And I'm talking about compensation going the other direction. And so they made the deal. So it's not like they will not make a deal. And yesterday, I don't think it has anything to do with whether they would make a deal or not make a deal, okay? It's pretty clear at this point that this team needs, at this point, I think more top-end talent because I don't think their 1A is a 1A anymore, but that's a, an entirely another discussion. All right, but let's get into exactly where they're at, all right? They're eighth, Alex. Now, they do have the tiebreaker on Philadelphia if they finish even with them. Um. Let, let me start here. Do you see any chance at the six? Because to me, that's the ship that sailed at this stage. No, I, I mean, I guess there's a small chance, right? Like if you had to come up with a with a number, it would probably be what, like a 5% chance. So it's just everything, like the all likelihood. In all likelihood, you're going to be in the playing game, and, and now it's about whether or not you have home or not in that playing game. The good, the good thing is, is like you're going to be the seventh or eighth seed regardless, right? So you're not going to – have only one chance to make the playoffs like the nine and 10. Uh, well, I'm sorry, not the one chance. They, they, they got to win two games just to, just to get in there. So, um, you know, you're in that position. You, you have two chances at the playoffs. Shouldn't have been in that position in the first place, like we we're talking about, but no, I think in all likelihood, the six seed is out the window bearing or barring some sort of miracle. 
I'm looking at Indiana's schedule right now, and this is kind of what we're referencing here. So the Pacers would need to lose two of these games if the Heat were to win out. Uh, at Toronto, <laughs> Cleveland at home. The Cavs have been awful lately. They just blew a huge lead to the Clippers. And then the Hawks at home. Um, the Hawks are locked into that 9-10 slot. Are, are now, are they locked into their exact position, Alex? Because 9-10, that's the first play-in game where – one of those teams is at home, so I'm going to try to let me see if I can if I can locate it also. But I, I don't Their know if game, that, that game's going to be bad. so. Chicago is a game ahead of Atlanta um, when it comes to the nine and tenth right now, and yeah, the the, the Hawks right. have nothing to worry about as far as like the eleven seed Nets uh, getting close. No, they've been eliminated. Five games behind. <laughs> no, they they they've been eliminated. Now the the Hawks and the Bulls are going to play in the nine ten game. That that has been yeah. established. Yeah. The question is who's at home. Uh, the Hawks, of course, they live in the play-in. Uh, they have for the past couple of years. <laughs> they're, uh, they're not exactly play-in champs, but they're certainly uh, annual play-in participants. That's kind of where that franchise is. I hate to say it, the Heat are trending towards that also, even with the finals appearance. You don't ever want to be in the same category as Atlanta. Um, but I, I think the odds of the Pacers losing two of these three or a slim. Now I say that, and the Pacers lost to the Nets the other day, who had really nothing to play for. And you just never know. Some of these young players, you know, late in the season, some of these out of the playoffs or play or low end play in teams are dangerous because they're playing their young guys who are trying to prove something, particularly leave a, an impression in the last week or two of the season. So you never know when you're going to get a guy go off. There were a couple in that Nets game, guys that I haven't really heard a lot about, who had big games. Uh, the same could happen, I guess, with Toronto. Quickly has been playing at a high level lately. Maybe he has a game against them. Um, well, and then again, we mentioned Cleveland the Cavs. Games. Well, they, they do. And Cleveland is still playing for something, although they're not playing well. Now, that game is in Indiana. But Cleveland has dropped all the way to five. And, and, yeah. and this is my – we're going to keep talking about seeding after the break. My frustration about this is – first thing, this Heat team is probably going to end up winning the exact number of games I said which is 47. They're going to be like 46 or 47. So I had somebody today on Twitter say, well, you said 47. Why are you disappointed in this team? And when you look at the net rating, as I've said all along, they're not a 46 or 47 win team. They're like a 42 or 43 win team, according to that. But it, the opportunities have been there. Like if you break it down, like uh, John Jablanca tweeted this today. Again, follow him in over. Uh, he's over in Miami Heat beat and he's on our Discord. The Heat have six losses versus lottery teams. The Nets, remember that one? That was that last game of that five-game trip after they blew the lead to the Knicks. He said that reasonable loss, all the starters were out. That's right. That's the game that, like, Jovic was all confused because he was the 10th man in, even though nobody else was healthy. And Caleb was just coming back and getting his rhythm, and everybody else was out, okay? The Nets game that Hero, Butler, and Bam all played, the Grizzlies game, that was the Grizzlies without Ja, without anybody. Oh, that's an awful loss. Rozier, Hero, Butler, and Bam all played inexcusable yep. Raptors game hero Butler and Bam all played jazz game hero and Bam played Butler played 23 minutes remember he went out in that game and then the Wizards game that was on the road and the Wizards game Rozier Butler and Bam all played inexcusable under any circumstances to lose to the Wizards so you go through those and you're like okay at least four or five of those should be gimmies and I think and then of course you haven't beaten a lot of the I it's, it's almost amazing to me because they've lost some of those and then they they haven't beat really any good teams this year, with the That's exception exactly of like the Knicks recently, right? Yeah, it's not I'm even that like, bad for their standards. That's the thing; they usually lose more of those games to the bad teams. Like the six well, is not terrible asking, for the Heat. <laughs> as I'm thinking about, like, how is this team? Like, who have the wins come against? Because I'm like, they haven't beaten any good teams, right? But somehow they've got more than they got four, 43 wins. And I'm like, where the hell did these wins come from? Because I'm trying to figure out who they. It feels like they were against like the very like lower middle of the league. But then I'm like. Okay, they lost that game to the Chicago they shouldn't have lost. Remember that one? They were up. You and I were at the Rock Esports watch party. They blew that one. I, so I'm torn on whether to be disappointed in the win total or grateful that this team has actually shrunk together for three wins, considering how inconsistent and kind of with their energy and also with their, uh, you know, their uh, availability uh, and with, with everything that they've been this season. But, Alex, I'm going to let you uh, pontificate on this after the break. I, I think – my frustration of this as an observer, and I understand the fans will be more frustrated, is that all of these other East teams except Boston have problems. 
Like, like Milwaukee is cratering, and Miami was too far back to make any use of it. Cleveland, uh, Donovan does not look the same. They, they're they already saying that either Donovan or Garland's got to go, and the Mobley-Allen thing doesn't work. Uh, New York's been without Randall for now it's for the season, but for months they were without Ananobi for a month. Embiid, they, I mean, Philly's one of the teams that looks dangerous right now. They're, they're To me, they're the second-best team in the East. Um, and, but Embiid, uh, you know, misses two months. Miami doesn't clear themselves of them. And that Indiana team we saw yesterday, like, that is not a finished product at all. They're well-coached. They got a good point guard. Didn't even play well last night. That's the frustration. It's like they should – we shouldn't be talking about six, seven, and eight right now. We should, with The way these teams have come back to the back, we should be talking about two, three, four, and five. And that's where I'm at. All right, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a couple sponsors here, and then I'm gonna let Alex kind of go through uh, the the rest of this stuff and where this end, um, ends up falling. We do want to mention our great sponsors over at Prize Fix. Use the code five F I V E. No longer legal in the state of Florida for now, for now, uh, but you can use it in 31 other states. So use the code five F I V E. If you're outside South Florida, we know a lot of our listenership, almost 30 percent, is outside of South Florida. So check it out, PrizeFix.com. Use the code 5, F-I-V-E, get that initial deposit matched up to $100. It is a one-time uh, match, and there are no rollovers, which is a great thing. Also, check out Better Edge. We're going to have some contests on there for the playoffs, but you can sign up now at betteredge.com backslash five reasons. That's betteredge.com backslash five reasons. Or when you download the app, enter 5RSN, the number 5RSN. You'll automatically get $20 to play. We recommend, if you are a gambler in South Florida, because this is legal, I know there's an app that a lot of you are using. That app, you may not get the line you want. I'm just saying, okay? Here, you can find it. That is the big advantage to Better Edge. So uh, you want to get a chance to take a look at a line that actually you like? Go to betteredge.com, use the code 5RSN, uh, or betteredge.com backslash 5 reasons. All right, Alex. So um, Indiana... Are we assuming that they're going to stay clear of the heat, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, there's like a slight chance, right, where like the heat went out and the Pacers somehow lose to, to you know, uh, at Cleveland, who, again, is trying to – like they still have a chance of getting back to the three seed. It's not looking great right now. As in five, but they're right there behind Orlando and New York. So there's that game, right? And you have the Hawks at home who are maybe at that point are still trying to get the ninth seed. From Chicago, so you can like maybe talk yourself into that, but no, in all likelihood, the Pacers are the six and the Heat are playing too. Okay. So Philadelphia, Pistons, Magic, Nets. All at home. This whole thing. All <laughs> at home. This whole thing's on that magic game, right? I mean, I mean, really, the Heat's only path right now is to win out and Philly loses to Orlando. Yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, it's feasible, you know, for the heat to win out, it does seem like a lot to ask for considering how inconsistent this team has been, but you do got two Raptors games in there. You know, the Hawks aren't some great team. And then the real question comes to the Mavs. Now, of course they can lose any one of those like quote unquote easier games as we've seen, but there, it, it, you know, it's, it's feasible, right? Because Orlando, like, like I just mentioned there with the Cleveland thing, they're a part of that race with Cleveland mm -hmm. and New York, and it seems like that's completely up in the air. Like, they're probably, like, favored to finish as the third seed right now, which makes this hurt even more, in my opinion, if you're a Heat fan, because it's like you could have been facing the Orlando freaking Magic. No shade to them. Great season, great defense, nice young team, all that. Huge difference between facing the Orlando Magic and facing, like, you know, Giannis and Dame or the Celtics. So, you know, there's would, that. Would have been favored, right? Would, would have been favored as a six, right? Probably, I would you, I mean, you got to. You got to think so. You got to think so. Like, right. I think a lot of like media members would probably be picking the heat. I'm not sure what the sports book odds would look like, but in general, like there's a path right to the heat getting mm. home court over the Sixers, but it's probably not likely. And then the other path, to, you know, just to sneak this in here um, that we can maybe root for. Right. As heat as heat observers, heat fans and us who actively need who have more at stake, by the way. Than more we than do the average heat fan. We, 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 we do really well. We do. I've been in a bad mood for 24 hours. I don't know. <laughs> I, it's been about, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's about Curbs finale, which didn't do it for me, or 
I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure a whole bunch of different things, but yes, no, we, we don't need another two months of, of, of transaction podcasts. Trust me. We don't, we don't, yeah. we'll get, we were going to get to that in June and July. The other thing though, that we can potentially root for all of us, as I'm saying is right now, the Orlando magic and the New York Knicks um, with the magic, having the tiebreaker are both one game behind the bucks. So yes. there is, maybe there's a chance that one of those two teams gets the second seed from Milwaukee, and then you end up facing the teams that you would have seen as the sixth seed, uh, but as, you know, the seventh seed. Again, in this, though, the Heat mm -hmm. would have to win that playing game, whether at home or away. You know, those are the types of scenarios that you can kind of root for right now. Okay, so to go through it for fans, again, who don't quite understand it, because we know that although the Heat are becoming more familiar with it, which is not great, uh, not every Heat fan may remember. Seven plays eight, nine plays ten. Of course, seven and nine are the home teams in those games. The winner of seven, eight gets the seven spot. So Miami just has to win one game. But the problem is it looks like the Heat are trending towards finishing eighth, which means unlike last year where they were seventh and they got the first home game, lost it, and then won against Chicago in the next game, this time they'd have to go to Philadelphia against, it seems like a healthy Embiid, who they're just resting right now, and a guy who just scored 54 points, and go up and win that game in Philadelphia to get the seven. And then, yes, at that point, okay, I don't really care who they play I because Milwaukee's been so bad lately that, honestly, whether it's Milwaukee, Orlando, Cleveland, or even the Knicks without Randall, yes, they do have an Anobi back. I know you've talked about the Knicks maybe better suited uh, without Randall and some of their shooting and all that, but I think any of those matchups, Miami would be like, okay, let's reset, okay, even Milwaukee. Let's reset. We're going to have to deal with them at some point. And I, I'm telling you, Bucks fans don't like the Dame trade right now. So they, they're, they're upset about losing Drew. And Doc has been, what, 15 and 16, 15 and 17. They're losing to all the dregs of the league. They don't scare me. They don't, shouldn't, they don't scare the Heat, okay? So I think any of those. Maybe that's the good. one series we could get Jimmy going again is, is against the Bucks' putrid perimeter defense as opposed to the it, Knicks or Magic. Just <laughs> being physical. You know what's funny is we used to talk about the Bucks being the worst matchup for him, but you're probably right, okay? But uh, unless again, they put Giannis on him, that might change things. I don't know. Well, he did drop 56 on him last year, but this is not the same Jimmy. That was that was pre Josh Hart injury and a whole bunch of other things. But the problem is here, okay, that of course, if you lose that seven eight game, then you got two options after that. They're both awful, okay? <laughs> Worst option is you're eliminated by the Chicago Bulls or the Atlanta Hawks. And I'm telling you, it could happen, okay? The Heat have not been a good home team this year. I can see Kobe White going for 31. Or Atlanta, I don't know what's going to be happening with Trey. They've been better to a certain degree without him. Jalen Johnson has blown up the last month. We know what Bogdanovich does against them. DeAndre Hunter? DeJounte. DeJounte. There's enough. There's <laughs> enough for one game. And again, Chicago, it may not even be Kobe White. It may be Io. It might, who knows who it's going to be. I, I Maybe Billy Donovan will be in Kentucky by then. But it, it, any way you look at it, it's it's not. That's that's obviously a possibility. It's an awful scenario. But playing the Celtics in the first round is not much better. And I, I just, like, my thing on, on the Heat was, can the Heat beat Boston in the playoffs? I believed that they could because we know that the Celtics are not the strongest mentally. The Heat have a little bit of an edge on them, okay? And I, I'm waiting for the inevitable Porzingis injury. It's it's going to happen at some point. But my thing about saying getting the Celtics was get them later. Get them later in the playoffs. Build up your rhythm with your team before you play them. Miami coming off a play-in loss where then they say they have to rally to beat the Bulls again. We'll be done in a week. I, I just I can't see them competing in that particular situation. So you should be out. <laughs> I just, I'm just trying to be look, it was right there. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. Like it was right there for them. And they literally it, they 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 squandered everything over TJ McConnell, who went 23 for 25 over a two-game period before he missed a couple shots. And we can talk about two minute reports Where does he rank? and all the rest of the stuff. Where does he, he rank killers? All -time he, he killers. I mean I mean, if that's what ends up sending them into the eighth spot and out of the playoffs, I think he's won. Like I, and you know, 
I mean, maybe they'll get him before he's 35. I'm like what happened with Patty Jones. Just get him I, and get him off of the – like get I, him out of your conference, even if you're not going to play him. For They God's did sake. that with Wayne Ellington. They've done that with Patty Mills. Like go get the heat killers. But T.J. McConnell is just – it's – I – I'll be talking I'm, to I'm for that matter. Holy crap. I know. Yeah. Anyway, good way to end. All right. So where do we think let, – let's project it. They're going to be the eighth seed, right? Oh, man. This is, this is getting into dangerous territory. <laughs> It might be jinxing whether really or not we game. have to do five five months of offseason content. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. They're going to enter the play-in as the eight seed, right? They're going to enter the play-in as the eight seed. Like, do, do you, more uh, it's more, more, than, more than likely, right? Okay, now, there's a possibility that they could go to Indiana as the seven. I don't know what the tiebreak is between Philadelphia and Indiana, but then you would need the Pacers – if if the if the Sixers win out, I believe then the Pacers would need to drop that game to the Cavs most likely, and then you go to Indiana. I honestly would feel better, even though we just saw the Blues there. I would feel better about that for the Heat than going to Philly. I I just I, I just think the Sixers are the second best team in the conference right now. I get I think that. They figured it the out. Sixers like Maxi has obviously taken another step this year with and without Embiid. Like there's no caveats about what he's been doing. He is obviously taking another step into stardom, and the Heat have had a lot of trouble with him over the years, even before he took the step. So that is definitely concerning. But then almost like I go back and forth because it's like Embiid, they've we've seen him. I mean, we've seen them do a good job on him before. And the other thing is that the Heat have like three more road wins than than home wins this season. So that's another thing. But then you 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 factor in that they just have had no answers for the Pacers, man. Like it feels like they've like this season, that's just a team that's had them just, you know, like on the back foot the whole time, like every time you've played them, it's, it, you know, when you just talk about the Heat's defensive game plan, they want to, you know, we talked about it plenty throughout the years. They want to help down. They want to cut off the paint. They want to make other teams maybe move the ball a little bit more and kind of take them out of their, their, their regular offense and make you it force you into more threes than you want to take. That kind of, you know, fits right in with what the Pacers want to do. Like they play fast paced as it is, you know, you can't really speed them up if they're already playing sped up. They constantly move the ball well. They like they love to shoot threes, and you didn't even get killed by them from last night. But yeah, like either way, it's not great. Whether you want to talk about them being a better road team or not, like this situation is just not great. And none of this, like none, nothing about this season, I think, has left Heat fans with the confidence to be like, oh yeah, whoa, yeah, we got that playing game. Especially not like versus this type of competition. Now maybe against the the the, the Hawks or the Bulls in the second one, sure. But even then, man, like it's too dangerous, and we could be out of here. You know, by before May even starts, which is just terrifying. When Jimmy says after the game that, you know, maybe this is the way it has to be because we always make it harder on himself, Heat fans are just tired of hearing that. They are just tired because I, I went through those games that Jablanka uh, went through, and I'm just, I, they're, they're tired of all the absences. They're tired of this. I, it's I, Again, it's crazy because I can't even remember who they beat this year, but they should be a 50 win team if you just look at some of what they've squandered. In terms of again availability, leads, all of that sort of stuff. The Eastern Conference sucks. It just sucks. I mean, I'm sorry. Like the West, I mean, there's there, I mean, the Heat would not be a playing team, most likely in the West at all. Okay. I mean, it has swung back to the West again. And you have teams with with more pedigree, more stars that are fighting to try to get to seven or six in the West and the heat should just not be in this position in this conference. They just shouldn't be. I, I can't, again, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Way better, but now in the East, you've got the Pacers and the Sixers as your playing competition. Whereas last year was Chicago. It was only yeah. Chicago and Atlanta. So like, it's, it's still a West, ah, but improvement. now. Improvement. Yeah. Improvement. Awesome. Improvement. Where's great for us. <laughs> improvement. By the way, title of this episode is going to be quote. It's not great. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs>